All right, people, it's time to discuss extracurricular activities. Now, over the last four years, I've looked at hundreds of profiles that have gotten into Ivy League and top 20 colleges, but I've also looked at profiles that have been rejected from these colleges. Now, if you're new to the channel because we've had a couple of new subscribers, I've had the pleasure of studying at two Ivy League universities, Cornell University, where I did my master's, and Harvard Medical School, where I did my research. Now, having this lifetime experience, I know what has worked for students and what doesn't. So in this video, we're going to break down everything you need to know from an extracurricular profile perspective. Now, in my opinion, you can categorize a wholesome profile into two pillars, academic and non-academic side of things. On the academic side of things, there are three things that you can move around and change to increase your chances of getting in. Your standardized testing score, which is SAT or ACT your high school grades, so basically how well you're performing in whatever curriculum you're studying in school. And number three, how well you are in test taking, so advanced placement tests. Some students take these, others don't. Other than these three pillars of academic standing, there's not much you can do. However, if you talk about non-academic standing, you have essays where you can show your creative writing skills and you have your extracurricular activities, your resume portfolio, where you can really showcase how much of an impact you've made in your community and how passionate you are in helping people and what your personality looks like. This is the place where students really get that competitive edge and are able to convince admission officers that they are the right fit for their college. Now, in my experience, top colleges admit students that are passionate about their extracurricular activities and have been pursuing them for more than six months. The reason being, if you do it for less than six months, it's, it's kind of like a giveaway that the only reason you did this was most likely to show in your college application. So the number one tip is you need to start early. If you are in class 9, 10, 11, just start that activity and take it till the finish line. The longer you've been working on an activity, the better it will be for your profile. It shows depth, it shows commitment, and it shows discipline. If you are unsure of an activity on where it fits on like a scale of one to five, drop that activity in the comments below. I'm gonna be active in this video on in the comments and reply to all of the students to evaluate their activity and basically rank them on a scale of one to five. Now, if I rank them five out of five, it doesn't mean the activity is bad. It just means it's a lower priority activity. Remember, when you put in your comment, let me know what major you're trying to apply to as well. So that way I can relate the activity that you've done and see how it kind of connects to the major that you're trying to apply to. The first one on our list is participation in a selective program. Now, this is like the cherry on top. If you can get this, it will by far highlight and probably be one of the best activities on your profile. Examples include RSI by MIT, you have the ISIF by Regeneron, and what a lot of these competitions have in common is they bring together outstanding minds in high school to compete against one another in an academic setting. Now, I myself was a judge for one of the county fair uh, competitions a few weeks ago where the shortlist is students moved on to CSEF and ICEF, basically the biggest science fairs in the entire world as high school students. And it was so cool to see the number of projects and what they had accomplished. Now again, RSI, ICEF, CSEF are very competitive. And I would say like 1% of students actually get selected to move on to these programs. So some alternative programs, in my opinion, would be the ISRP by Incognito Blueprints and even the Research Bootcamp by Incognito Blueprints. The ISRP is a selective program, so you do have to go through an interview-based process to get accepted into the program, which makes it all the more elite. And you work with a mentor for a span of three months towards a research based on the major that you're trying to apply to, and towards the end, that manuscript is submitted for publication. So you'll have your own publication before you're even applying to colleges, which is something a lot of college admission officers are impressed by. Now, the research bootcamp, on the other hand, is a virtual eight-week summer bootcamp where you work in a team of about three to six other students um, that have a collective interest in like computer science or STEM or non-STEM, and you work towards a project. There are competitions and project showcases and awards that are given out, so great place to be involved in. The applications for both of these programs are open. For the research bootcamp, you can just enroll uh, the links are going to be in the description below, so make sure you check both of them out. The second activity that I want to talk about is fundraising money. Now, I'm going to put an umbrella topic 
of fundraising money and I'll tell you what I mean in this situation. Now you can fundraise money for a nonprofit or you can fundraise some money for a startup idea that you have. Whatever you're passionate about and you feel you are interested in, go towards that route. The whole concept of raising money really solidifies a few interpersonal skills. It shows that you have these social and extrovert skills to communicate with people and convince them on an idea that you have. And it's real money. You cannot fake this. So when students in high school are able to tell college officers with proof that they've been able to raise like $1,000 or $5,000 for this cause, let's say they're building an AI agent or a generative AI platform and they were able to pitch to some investors, whether that's family and friends or angel investors and get some funding for their startup, it all sounds really cool. And it should, because this whole process is what and how real life works. After students graduate or even when students come into a college setting, the college officers want all of these skills in the student to still exist. When you're a student as part of a college, you'll still be doing tons of fundraising activities for college-based clubs. So these are great skills to show that you already have a slight sense into. You don't have to show that you're a master at it. They're not expecting you to raise $100,000 or win like Shark Tank or anything. But the goal is you've started, you know how it works, and you're also showing them that with a little bit more training, you can be really good at it. Number three is a job. Now, this is a very common conception or trend for students who are living in the US. Most summers, they'll work a job. Now, that job can be shadowing a professor or working on some research. Um, it could be working at a restaurant or helping out their family or friends, their parents. It's a job. A job is a job. But it's not that common in international students. And I want to say that this showcases real life skills as well. If you are a student who's been at a job and who's done an actual job, it can be paid or unpaid. I'm okay if they're not paying you. Like obviously, if you are working under a professor, they may not agree to pay you because you're just a high school student. And that experience is what matters. It shows that you have certain hours where you're expected to show up and you're doing that diligently. You're also um, taking care of the tasks that are given to you, completing them on time, and you have that supervisor uh, relationship that you're maintaining. So all of these skills really showcase that you're, you're ready for real world setting. Number four is zero to hero. Now what this means is a trajectory. So I want you to think of something you've been doing for a really long time. Um, I can give you my example. When I was in school, I was the school prefect. Now, the school prefect was like a class monitor, so I was responsible for some tasks. They weren't extreme. Um, when I went to the next grade, I then became a house vice captain. So instead of one class, I was in charge of a few classes. After the house captain, I became the school vice captain, which is basically just second in command to the captain. And then in my final year, I became school captain. In fact, I was the first girl school captain in the history of my school, which was such a big accomplishment. And that is what I mean to show trajectory. In my example, it was kind of like hierarchy based on like the school system, but this can be applied anywhere. It, it applies to clubs. If you have like a specific robotics club, maybe you were a member, then you became a supervisor, manager, you moved on to treasurer, and then you became the president of that club, something like that. The goal is it shows in one setting, you've grown as a person where other people were responsible for the promotion that you received. So you're not the one who's the founder and then you've just like made yourself the biggest position. It doesn't work like that. It's basically other people deciding that you should have the position. So it shows that others external to you have the confidence in you to carry out these responsibilities. So this trajectory is extremely important. So if you have some time, showcase this. Obviously, if you're in class 11 or 12, you may not have something that you can build from scratch because this takes time. So think of something that you've been doing and where you can show that growth and add this to your extracurricular profile. It is a big activity. Number five on our list is spending hours outside of school. Now, US citizens, US residents, international students are all stressed about this one thing, which is volunteering. In my opinion, it is quality over quantity. So don't try to chase 
that tag that I've done 200 volunteering hours. Instead, try to do something meaningful. If your school has programs where you can participate for volunteering-based activities outside of school, sign up for them. I know a lot of students who do uh, cleanup drives. They visit like underprivileged homes or they go to like um, these other schools um, where they spend time with some children or they teach children or they clean up and basically have involvement in the community. Now let's suppose your school doesn't really do anything of this sort and you're responsible for figuring out yourself. You can organize this. However, when you're showcasing it in your college application, it's important to know, don't show yourself off as a manager. The fact that you organized it should be a small thing. The big and prevalent thing in the activity is the actual volunteering activity itself. I've seen students make a mistake where they'll kind of treat themselves as, oh, I managed a group of 50 people. And all of, even though the activity is volunteering based, the description is how they manage the group. And they don't really talk about the volunteering activity at all. That kind of pisses off the college admission officers because they're not interested in seeing your managerial skills. Like that's not something that will impress them. They're interested in seeing if you are able to do the work, if you are a good volunteer, if you can make an impact in the community. Now that's all that I had for this video. The best part about all five activities that I mentioned is whether you are in class nine, 10, 11, or 12, you can still do them. As I said in the beginning of the video, it is quality over quantity. So if you're starting off early in class nine or 10, take this the long way and do them till your class 12. It'll really have a huge impact. And if you're in class 11 or 12 already, start doing these activities. There's some change that you can bring in your profile itself. Now, for those few of you that are still watching till this point, the question of the day is, what is your dream university? If you had to pick one university, which one would that be? Drop that in the comments below. I wanna see what people are dreaming of these days. And like the video if you're watching till this point, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.